Welcome, everybody. I'm Kyle Hine, and I'll be hosting the Players Podcast, a GTM family production in partnership with the EuroLeague Players Association. I will be having in-depth conversations with current and former EuroLeague players about important topics that many athletes face on and off the basketball court. Stay tuned for more episodes. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Player Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, um, a basketball legend, um, you know, one of the most heralded and most, most uh, prestigious uh, international players um, in our game today, Mr. Jose Calderon. Jose, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Great. Doing great. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. Thank you. So before we uh, get into our conversation, I got to... I got to set the stage and and, uh, and and pay a little homage to you. Um, you know, twenty year professional career. Um, you know, you started your early, your early career with uh, Tao Victoria um, back in two thousand three, and then went on to have a fourteen year NBA career. Uh, most of the time uh, with the Toronto Raptors, um, and then you went on to play with Detroit, Dallas, New York, L.A., Atlanta, Cleveland, and uh, Detroit again um and then we're going to speak on you know your your amazing spanish national team career um you know three olympic medals uh a world cup gold medal euro basket gold medal two silver medals two bronze medals um you know amazing career man so i just want to say hats off to you big respect i mean you've been you know one of my favorite players um you know one of my teammates is you know chacho rodriguez so you know i talk about you and you know talk about you guys all the time with your spanish national team so um and then and then i have to i can't forget to mention your a lot of the stuff that you do off the court um you're an ambassador with uh, unicef um which is which is which is amazing um and right now you're working with the NBA, MBPA as a, a special assistant to Michelle Roberts. So hats off to that. So I uh, just wanted to say, man, thank you. I respect you a lot. And, um, you know, hats off to amazing, amazing career. No, thank you. I mean, uh, when you talk about the whole, all that you just named, and it was, uh, it was an, an amazing experience. I think it was great. But the most important thing is like, you just having the, this work from, from guys like you, like, you know, you've been in, in the Euroleague, you say uh, a legend at the beginning. I think uh, I'm talking to a legend uh, oh, thank you. as well. I think it was <laughs> amazing, you. amazing what you've been doing all this year. I think it's a maybe a other way around transition. It's not easy what you guys do and, and, and play all those years in Europe and, and adapt, adjust to new cultures and, uh, and change countries. So it's, I know how difficult that is. So so I think that's that's something really really important. And um, I mean. Uh, I got the, like you say, great teammates. I think that's the most, uh, the best part uh, mm -hmm. uh, to be successful. I think when you have great teams, great teammates, when you work uh, and put the team first, always uh, good things happen. Uh, and that's, that was my, my thing uh, every year, every season, doesn't matter how much I was playing or how important I was on the core of, you know, minutes, uh, talking about minutes or whatever. I think it was more about everything else. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's the more important part. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, now we're going to get into our conversation. I know you're you're a busy guy doing a lot of things um, and we're going to talk today, um, which could be, you know, one of the I guess one of the most scariest uh, phases or scariest words uh, for uh, any athlete. Um, and that is retirement. And we're going to talk, you know, about preparing for retirement and um, to set the kind of the backstory, the reason why I wanted to talk to you, um, see, not only because of your, you know, your, your held a career, but also um, because of, you know, the many things that you've done off the court, but I think also because you, you're uh, unique in the fact that you can, you can speak from both perspectives. And I think, you know, a lot of our listeners, a lot of the players out there have opportunity to understand you can speak it both from the NBA professional side, but also, you know, as a European player, um, you're living and playing in a foreign land. So, you know, the first question I have, you know, you've, you've retired in 2019. So you almost been retired for um, just over, you know, just over one full year. Um, how has retirement been for you? Um, is there something, you know, what are the positives about retirement? Um, what are the negatives? Um, and then the, the second question I will have is, you know, is what do you miss the most about the game? Is there one thing that you miss the most? And then is there something that you don't miss? Is there something like you're like, you're just relieved that, you know, after so many years, you don't have to deal with anymore? Okay, so let me start with the, what I missed. And, mm -hmm. and I say, like, the only thing I miss, I think, is just the, 
being in the locker room, being with the with the guys, the mm-hmm. the hangout with with my teammates, the uh, and maybe the 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 com- competition part of the game. You know, mm-hmm. like just go out there every night trying to do things. The good thing about it, like, I mean, I've been so busy the last year uh, mm-hmm. because of everything that I didn't have a time to think about basketball. So mm-hmm. when people ask me, did you miss it? I'm like, I, mean, I didn't have time. I was uh-huh. lucky enough. And I think that's, that's, that's going to be my point. It's like, I was ready to, was, what was coming next. I was mm-hmm. ready to jump into something uh, to be busy. I think a lot of players got problem when you retire, but if you don't have a plan after a couple of weeks of doing nothing, vacation is nice, holidays is nice, you spend more time with the family, but we're so used to do stuff like you just cannot hang out all the time. You need yeah. something. You need to keep uh, your mind busy. So, so I think that's what I did. I think that's the positive part. And that's why I'm not missing basketball that much because I was able to uh, transition into to something else. And the crazy part is it's been only a year, like you said. Mm-hmm. But so many things happened in the last year. This is the year what the most happened because of the pandemic and, yeah. and everything. So uh, I was adjusting to my life in the office and two months later, I'm talking with NBA and just talking about canceling the season, getting the bubble ready in Orlando. Uh, when we finish that after that crazy, it's like, okay, now we got to prepare another season. Mm-hmm. So it was like one thing after another that kept my mind busy. Um, and that's why, man, maybe I start missing basketball more now, but it was so quick, everything that hit me, like I'm, I didn't have time to think mm-hmm. about it. Now, describe your your first day in the office. Um, you know, this you, after twenty years of being in in uh, in locker rooms and arenas, and you know, almost having a set routine and a set schedule. You know, every day. You know, what was that first day when you walked into the office and you know suddenly you're sitting at your desk and you're just like, okay, you know what? what describe that first day for us. You know, it is crazy and it's totally different um, mm-hmm. uh, because now, okay, you get there, your role is different mm-hmm. from maybe be a leader in, on the core, a, a guy who everybody was uh, listening to, uh, to a different kind of like a part of the team. So yeah, now you, that's the first thing, your role changed. So now I got there, I get to my office, you know, like an hour before my first meeting, I'm there. So just looking around, you get your computer ready, you get everything, everything set up. And it's almost like, okay, let's see what's next. Uh, you know your role, you know, you have your meetings, you know what they're expecting from you. So now you get that hour, get the time, um, and you start walking. You walk mm-hmm. into that meeting, sit there, and it's kind of like you start listening and see where you can fit, where you can help. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what Michelle brought me for. But my, my first day was just, it's kind of like, I guess it could be a little bit when you chain teams, mm-hmm. even if you play and you know some of those guys and you get the first day on that new locker room, uh, you always kind of like get to, okay, let's see how things work here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so you kind of like a sit around and kind of like a look to everywhere um, and, and just go from there. <laughs> so how, how long do you think it took you um, to get adjusted to kind of like full retirement? Well, like you said, you know, the, a lot of things happen. But when did you wake up and, and not feel like a, a basketball professional basketball player anymore? And, and suddenly did you feel like, you know, a person that's working a nine to five? I think it was more, you know, maybe after the first, second week, you start mm-hmm. getting used to it. You start getting waking up, uh, getting the kids ready, drop them to school, uh, walk to the office or, or, or taking the subway to the office. So when you do that for like 10, 14 days, now you're like, okay, okay, this is, <laughs> this is what, it, what it is. Uh, uh, go back home and get lunch maybe with my wife and, and pick up the kids and go to basketball. So it was more on the, okay, this is my daily day, uh, my daily routine now, uh, how I adjust to it, do I like it, what I got to change. Um, the good thing about it, like I was uh, Michelle and, and the PA was so flexible with my time that I didn't have to be from 10 to five or nine to five. That mm-hmm. was one of the first thing I say, I'm like, look, I just retired. Yeah. If you guys need me from 10 to five, maybe I'm not your guy. I need some, I need time to adjust. I need time to, to freedom. I want to be spend time with my, my quality time with my kids. Which is important. So, so that was one of the first things. It was like a learning process. I don't know what will happen in the future, but at the beginning, I didn't want to just like from one day practicing to the next day, just sitting in an office mm-hmm. nine hours. I think that's, that's a big change too. So uh, they helped me with that. So that, that was great. 
That's really good. Now let's let's kind of uh you know circle back a little bit. Now you're you're playing and you know you're you're an NBA professional. When did you start um you know start preparing for retirement? When did it kind of like sink in? Like you know I need to start you know figuring out what's next. At what stage of your career did you start you know start aligning those things, start putting those things together? Well, it was more of like my last three, maybe three. You know, the last three years when I kind of like a. Uh, it was more focused into it. I knew it mm-hmm. was like, I don't know if it was going to play two, three or four, but I knew, you know, it was getting there. I was, you know, getting older. My role was changing. And more because of my role, it was more about, man, I miss my boys. I miss my kids. I wanted to spend time with them. Um, and I was just putting a stuff on the balance. And I was yeah. like, okay, basketball is here. The money was, wasn't an issue thanks, you know, to, to all my whole career. So now putting that apart, it was about everything else. It was like, okay, what else? can I do? Can I help basketball in a different way? Can I help somebody else? What are my businesses now? Are my investments ready? Do I need to spend more time with UNICEF or my foundation? So I was starting putting on my mind everything. Okay. I'm putting, okay, this is what I am. I know I can play three more years, but what if nobody calls next year? I'm ready. You know, so, so that was the questions. And after I start thinking about it, so I'm like, okay, let me get ready. Uh, Mm -hmm. I want to be more prepared. Do I need to study what I need to study? Uh, So that's when I started doing stuff with uh, a university. I went to to do the Harvard stuff like we do, uh, crossover into business. I did a UCLA thing about foundations. I did a couple of things with uh, uh, universities in Spain. Just to be more familiar with uh, maybe sometime with just uh, uh, themes that I was talking with my investor, like, hey, what is an Abida? If I want to invest in a restaurant, what I have to look for? So it was just to be uh, more prepared on everything. So I was studying almost so in every plane, hotel rooms. The last three years, that's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Classes online, uh, getting ready without really knowing what I wanted to do. That, that, that's important because there is people who know I want to be a coach. Yeah. That's perfect. That, that's, that make everything a little bit even easier because you can prepare to be a coach. But for me, I wasn't sure uh, uh, if I wanted to join uh, a front office, if I wanted to join... MBA or 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 or, or a, maybe uh, a MBPA. So it was more about okay, let me get ready, kind of like a little bit of everything. Let me get more educate on business stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's how I started. Um, and after you know, just start having meeting with people, and and this this job kind of like a, uh, open up, and they they talk to me, they approach me, and I thought it was a great opportunity, and that's why I took it. So so it was my last, you know three two two three years when i start putting everything in perspective now is there we mentioned you know one of the things you missed the most is the locker rooms and the kind of the discussion with the guys is is this something this retirement or life after basketball is this something that is a a common conversation or a common topic that guys talk about in the locker rooms you know amongst each other or or amongst coaches or much other people i think it's getting better Mm -hmm. i think my first few years in the league i think it was a big kind of like a gap between rookies and veterans yeah. um, there is always some veterans who were able to help more um, but rookies were maybe maybe it was too too quiet I'm, I'm not saying it was like nobody's fault I think it was trying to put things together I think sometimes you talk in the in, in the locker room about other players or games or whatever the other sports but maybe we didn't get into the important part mm-hmm. like hey family what are you doing what that what investments are you doing um, sometimes we always talk about the good things mm-hmm. instead about the, the things that, that maybe they didn't work out well. I think those are even more important sometimes because those are the things we should share with our teammates. Why? Because we don't want those guys to, to experience the same uh, mistakes. Like for whatever reason, we all have. Yeah. Uh, it could be a bad investment. It could be a bad advice from a financial advisor, whatever it is. But we all go through something, even with family. And I think we forgot that. I think that is important to, to bring it up and to let guys know. Um, I always have a, I always was pretty, you know, open and talk mm-hmm. and, and getting new guys to talk. And sometimes it take for some guys, it takes time to maybe trust you and they don't know where, where you're coming from. And that's why, you know, that those talks are important. And, and when they know you are in the, with the right heart and just trying to really help, I think it's important to, to have those conversations too, not only about, what happened in soccer or who played yeah. good or I think there is more that we can talk and we can help each other uh, because we are all in the same of, of this and we're going to have the same opportunities. It doesn't matter how much money you make 
uh, we all going through the same first steps and it's important to talk about. All right. Now, one of the questions I also have too is about, um, you know, the NBA and just sports in general is becoming younger. You know, there's not as many, um, you know, veteran guys and there's not as many, um, you know, older, you know, kind of it was, you know, back, you know, back before. Um, so how are you now that you are retired? Um, you know, how are you, you know, kind of reaching out and reaching back or do younger guys, you know, especially guys that are European guys, do those guys reach out to you, you know, to speak to you about, you know, retirement and, you know, how you've been able to transition into your career and what, what kind of questions or what type of things do they ask you? Yeah. I mean, everything is, is, is kind of like, like, like the same, No, it's about, how it is that's the yeah. first thing you never retire so the first time you're is the first time in everything yeah. how everything is going to come to you so so that's why the being prepared the, the talking the asking questions are really important i think everybody should like i'm always open but i mean if somebody's going to get to that point i think it's good to just reach out and say hey jose what was your biggest uh, problem what would your advice and i would say amen just don't don't think about getting ready when you retire mm -hmm. why because maybe it's too late you don't want to get to that point where you really need to start asking questions or, or calling people you should be able to to get ready before that because you don't know that doesn't mean you got to jump into something right away yeah but 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 just being prepared you know knowing what you expect and i think that's the more important thing just to those questions and after it's about you know like how you know uh do you know what you want to do um, and, and, and that's, that's really important. Some guys don't know, and, and it's, it's okay. I think it's good to try different things. There is a lot of stuff out there to, to being able to, for people to help you to say, Hey, let me see. Maybe I like coaching. Maybe I like broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Maybe I like something. Just do a stuff. We, we, we have so much off time to being able to, uh, to get better at that. And the problem is sometimes to reach out to young guys. And I understand, and you have people that rookies here in the NBA. Yeah. Talking to a guy about retirement when they just got to the league. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. It's, it's, kind, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, and I always talk to our guys in the PA. I'm like, you imagine, you work so hard. You are 19 years old. You get to the league. And now there is some guy telling you, hey, you got to do be prepared when you retire. I mean, man, I just got to the league. Yeah. So I think it's, 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 there is ways to say, look, I know you have a lot of time ahead of you. But there is something that you always should have in mind. We don't know for how long you're going to be in the league. Mm -hmm. It could be an injury. And your retirement, we don't want it, but it could be next year. So, so it's just about being prepared, how much money you're making, how you're saving. Because even if you play one year, you're making more money than maybe people make in a whole life. In a whole lifetime. So, yeah. so, so just be prepared for that. You know, I always say, don't think that guys say, oh, when I have my second contract, I'm going to do this. You don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So don't be thinking about that. You have what you have. And you, have, you should be thinking about that. So that's why, that's what I told the young guys. I'm like, man, you don't know. We want you to play 20 years. But there is so many stuff that could happen that we're talking about something different the year after that. So it's time for everything. Just put it something in your mind. Just, just, just to keep it there. Um, that, that would be my, my advice to those uh, young guys. Now, you, you talked about you did, um, you know, a bunch of different programs, the UCLA program, the Harvard, um, you know, sports business program. Is there one, you know, specific thing or one specific program that stuck out, stood out to you that you really, you know, learned a lot from that, you know, that you, um, that you would say that you would even recommend to other people or other players? Yeah, those two are great. Uh, one is because uh, the, the crossover into business in mm -hmm. Harvard I think it's, it's a great because there's all other athletes around the world, like US mostly, but they're all athletes. So you just talk to them. You're there for two days. After everything is online, you do uh, case studies, you know, and, uh, and you work with a partner or with a group. So these guys that they are in the same situation, they are, they play soccer or tennis or they are Olympics, um, uh, uh, some other Olympic sports, like but they're all kind of like in the same situation. So that's good to be able to work with other people and realize like there is a lot of people that they're going through the same thing and they're mm -hmm. trying to learn and they're trying to. So that, that's a good idea. The one we did, I did in UCLA was through the, the MBPA. It was, uh, uh, it was about foundations. It was about working with UNICEF. I wanted to have my foundation and, and it was just to trying to figure out and to learn more how to being able to, to give back, to help other people and to create something that uh, you know it could be uh, uh, 
like kind of like impactful in my community mm -hmm. back in Spain. So, so those two are great. The ones I did in Spain, it was more specific about my businesses, my investments. It was about uh, from accounting to mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, startups, how to go from from a startup to uh, to a scale to a scale up, you know, just to see, okay, I got my little business, what I gotta do, what are the next step, how I to, can to get better it. to maybe to grow it. So, so it was really specific about what I wanted to do, and there is ton of stuff. Uh, the good thing we have in the PA uh, in the in the player association is like we actually pay for all those. Like we yeah. can we we help guys. To, to, to go to do all, do all of those and there will be free for them or even get back to college because they didn't finish their college uh, and we'll, we'll pay the, the tuition for them as well. So there is so many opportunities. And that's what I did. That's what the ones I was doing because uh, I needed for, to, to, uh, to learn from, from my experience. Now, um, you talked about it a little bit before about, you know, younger guys reaching out to you or you talking to younger guys. Um, can you speak on, you know, did you have any, um, you know, somebody that you asked questions to, so, uh, older player, veteran players, um, you know, did you have kind of like a mentor that kind of helped you out? And you kind of speak on the importance of that if you did have one? Yes, like, you know, when I get to the, to the league, uh, I think in Spain it was a little bit different because mm -hmm. of what I say. You get too professional, you, you're too young. But our culture is a little bit different. Yeah. So, so yes, you are in Spain, but at the same of the time, I'm thinking, okay, should I get a mortgage, my first house? Uh, should I buy a car? What kind of a car? So I was a little bit maybe more worried about, I wasn't sure how many more years I was going to play. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I was trying to make the most of the money that I have. And my parents were on to me all the time about, hey, you just got to save. We, we good here or there. So, so that, that's one part. And the other part is like, yeah, I mean, it, it is difficult to to get to so many questions and things that that when you're young, how to get everything in your mind to make yeah. to make sure you're doing the right thing, you know. So so I look at I got to Toronto and Derek Martin, he was a veteran, he played already like 10, 12 years in the league, and he gets us a third pointer. But not even that, he arrived the first day and, and told me, hey Jose. I'm the third point. Man. I'm a veteran. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to take your minutes. Mm -hmm. So that was just like, oh, okay. Uh, I, it's almost like, okay, I can trust this guy. So he was the guy who kind of like helped me out to everything, how the NBA life was about. So he, he helped me every day um, uh, with everything. Uh, and after I was lucky to, they got Anthony Parker my second mm -hmm. year. He came from Europe. He played in Europe uh, in Maccabi. Um, he came to the Raptors, so so now he played in the NBA and in Europe at the highest level. So I got another veteran who was helping me with, mm -hmm. with both ways. Um, uh, Chris Boss was was the second year of a Chris Boss, or third year when I arrived. So we great. It was a great relationship there. So I got guys who was able to help me and to ask questions. Um, uh, I got a little bit of everything. Like Chris Boss was a superstar already, or almost there. Um, but I was able to talk to Derek Martin, who was mm -hmm. on the last years of the, his career. Or Anthony Parker, who was just, you know, a role player, great career, but he was in the middle. So the three of them, I was touching and asking questions to all of them. Um, and that helped me a lot. That's good. That's good. That's good. That makes a lot of sense. Now, you, we, we touched on your playing career. And like I said before, you retired in, in 2019. Um, I talked to a lot of older guys, um, you know, whether or not it's like Kevin Martin or Anthony, um, Anthony Parker or a bunch of these guys. And they're saying play as long as you possibly can, you know? Um, so my question to you is, you know, when you retired, when did you know that it was time to walk away? And then how difficult, you know, of a decision was that? Cause I mean, in our, one of the things in professional sports, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of us don't get the luxury to, to retire when we want to retire, you know, either it's because of injury or it's because, you know, the team, you know, kind of pushes you along. Um, but, you know, for you, you know, when did you kind of know that like, you know, this is it? And, you know, like I said, was it a difficult decision? I think that that was one of the, the things uh, for me was the more important. I wanted to retire when I wanted to retire. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I think you start kind of like seeing what's going on. What is the trend? Yeah. You know, okay, my role, my role, I was really always, I was always really honest with myself. I was mm -hmm. the first one. Nobody had to tell me what I was able to do or not. I can see it. If I wasn't playing, uh, maybe it was because of me. It was maybe my whatever maybe i wasn't ready to play in the nba no more 
for my age, for my speed, for whatever it was. So I was always honest in that situation. So for me, it was like, okay, you know, the team is getting there. This is the role I have. It's not going to get better. This is the role maybe I'm going to have next year too. Yeah. Uh, how valuable it is, how, how bad I want it. Um, is maybe the time is playing 14 years in the league or 15 years in the league make it different. It's going to be the same role. So my question was, okay, if there is no one of the big teams who call me to maybe have another chance to kind of like a play for a championship, maybe it's time. I'm maybe tired of working out a lot and practice more than anybody, but traveling the same. Uh, but now I'm missing my family. Yeah. So if money it was out of the question, now it's like, okay, the balance is, you know, getting to, you know, the family kind of like way. So that's why the last two, three years was like, okay, I have to be prepared just in case, you know? So I didn't want, I always say this, we shouldn't get to September and say, oh, I don't have a team, what yeah. I should do. Yeah. So yes, play as long as you can, but be honest with yourself. So if it's, there is no injuries, the, it cannot get you by surprise. There is a reason. There is something you get in there. You can feel it. You can feel it like for whatever reason. Now, there is always going to be situations. You always can go to a second division or like, I mean, second division, like they, they going lower and lower because you love basketball and, and you're okay with it and it's your terms. But that, that's, that's when you got to make or, or your mind. Like, do I want to get back to Europe at some point? I have a, a few calls. I, I don't think so. It was time mm-hmm. for my family. I think they, they, they kind of like uh, were with me with the NBA and now it was their time. I didn't want to get back to Europe and move everybody. And so I was sure like it was their time now. So I think that's, that's, that's what it is. I think it's putting everything into a balance and, and I start thinking, okay, this is my terms. This is what I want to do. Uh, do I want to retire as a Euroleague player? Do I want to retire to, uh, no, maybe I, I want to go to play somewhere else. Maybe I want to try China or I want to play yeah. try Australia different role, different, but that's your term. So I think that's, that's the, the biggest issue for me. I wasn't, I was ready to say, this is it. I want it to be me. Um, I didn't want to be in that September saying nobody's calling in the NBA. So that, 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 that's the main thing. Yeah. I think one of the important keys you hit on is just to be honest with yourself. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes I think that's a, especially as you become older, you know, and more of a veteran player and, you know, some, sometimes some of your skills diminish and different things, different things like that. I feel like players find it more difficult to be honest with yourself because, you know, you're, you still have that competitive spirit in mind, you know, you still want to go out and play, you still want to go out and contribute. But like you said, sometimes the the writing is already on the wall and you just got to just kind of, you know, already know and already be prepared. And I'm ready to go back tomorrow if yeah. they ask me to. But I know my, I, what, I was, what I wanted to say is like, man, I know my minutes. I know my yeah. numbers. I know what I can do. Can I help a team at that situation? Yes. And that's why I was working out until last minute and getting ready and, and telling teams, look, I'm not ready to do this again, this way. I'm winning only for these three, four, five teams. If I can make a third pointer on these teams, yeah. um, I'm okay having this role again. Now, Doing it again, no practicing. I'm going to be able to help you, but I need somebody to get injured. I need somebody to, because I know my minutes are not rare. You're, you're looking for something different. Um, and now I'm a veteran. Um, I know I can now maybe play 38 minutes for you. Uh, maybe I cannot play one on one against Damian Lillard anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you got to be honest with yourself. I'm, com- you know, I'm going to compete. I'm going to yeah. hit him. I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. But you got to be honest and say, okay, maybe my role is not 38 minutes. Maybe it's 18. Maybe I can help the team here. Maybe this is the teams I can help. So that was, I always was pretty honest. I knew what I could do when I was younger, what I could do in the middle, what I was able to do at the end. Um, and that's, I think that's helped me a lot. And that's why I'm really, it was always easy for me uh, on my mind to go to the next step. I think that was, you know, even with all the, if I go there, I can do it better than this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Because we all are gonna have that in our minds. We all think that, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but but okay, yes, I can. But why I'm not doing it? Why mm-hmm. the coach is not putting me? Or why what I should do? Or so that was always my my thinking about uh, about that situation. 
And I, I, I talked to some guys and, you know, some guys on my team are like, you know, when I retire, I'm never going to touch a basketball again. I'm never going to, you know, shoot another jump shot. Just just a funny kind of curious question. How often are you in the, the PA gym putting up jumpers since you've been retired or, or, or shooting around? Or are you at the, the local 24 hour uh, fitness, you know, running, uh, running some pickup games since you've been done? Look, it, it's tough. Like the beginning was like that, was yeah. uh, the, the staff members even play a yeah. couple of times a week or once a week. So I play with them, I play <laughs> against them. Uh, just it is difficult to just say I'm not touching the basketball yeah. uh, as right now, because sometimes we frustrated, we tired, but it's what we've been doing forever. So how are you going to just forget about something that it gave us so much? So like you say, even having the basketball there, like I just... Sometimes I walk by and I dribble three times and maybe take a <laughs> shot and go back. It's like, it's just, it's just there. And yeah. I don't miss it, but it's, it's something you so used to it. Yeah. Like, uh, and for me, I was lucky enough because I'm going to maybe get my son to basketball. Mm -hmm. So now he's, you know, while they are in the other, you know, I'm there and I'm getting a couple of shots here and there. So it just is, to see, it is just tough to see if you still say, got it. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's tough to say, oh, I'm not touching. It's true, like I maybe didn't practice like for real or, or, play too many pickup games, but it's tough, man. It, it is there. You see that basketball and you just reach out. You just reach to, to pick it up and just bounce three times. It's almost like nice and just put it back, and, you know, but it's, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. So, so we'll see to those guys who say, oh, I'm not touching a basketball again yeah. because they're going to have their son. They're going to go to basketball to, to, to practice. And when they see that ball bouncing, uh, there's no way they're sitting in that chair. Yeah, they're they gonna, gonna wake up, up. They're gonna stand up. They're gonna pick it up. They're gonna get two shots. They maybe sit later, <laughs> but they will do it. It's tough to just say no. That's absolutely true. Now to a little bit of a more of a, a, a serious topic. Um, when it comes to retirement, do you think that um, that athletes um, and you know some of the athletes that you may know are? Do you think that they're afraid of retirement? Do you think sometimes guys, you know, um, you know, kind of, I guess, run from retirement um, or have any fear or anxiety about, you know, you know, what's next? And and have you experienced that or have you known anybody, like you said, dealing with, uh, you know, in, in the teammates or anybody, you know, kind of experienced that fear and that kind of anxiety when it comes to retirement or talking about more. retirement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think there, there, there is a lot of guys who happen and that's why the being prepared part is so important. Uh, and 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 getting ready and so all that we just talk about i think is it's about that it's about hey we you don't know but nobody knows and there's yeah. a lot of guys who are being successful after basketball so that means there is a way why you know that's that's why we gotta ask that's why we gotta comment on like okay what, what you did how you did it uh, and, and some guys that are successful they they have a tough maybe a rough two or three years until they figure it out so that's why the sooner you can figure out what you want to do is the better is you know that's the, that will, will be the best. But I mean, it is it is difficult. Uh, I didn't, like I said, I think I was lucky enough to jump right away into something to keep me busy that I didn't experience that was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think situations are different. Uh, I think if you are okay with uh, money wise, then you maybe don't have that rush into doing something. Now, if you're not prepared, and I'm not saying mentally, but even you know with your economy, your daily day basis and you need the money, then it gets you into, there is more trouble. There is, yeah. there is the rush into, I need a job. I need this uh, because you need to provide to your family or even just for yourself. So there is a lot of steps going on into, into that. And that's why I think it's important to, to, to like, I, like we said before, we'll be talking like, ask questions. Yeah. Why this guy being successful? Why this guy have problems? But we have so many guys like, they go broke or or they have problems after basketball because they think, you know, uh, it's going to be easy and, and it's not. Yeah. So you, you touched on it. You know, one of the biggest things is that's been, uh, you know, talked about a big topic is the, the mental health. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things that occurs a lot when, you know, guys retire. Um, they say a lot of, you know, guys, you know, because of the identity crisis, you know, they, you know, for, for their whole entire life, you know, up to this point, they've been known as a basketball player or known as a professional athlete. So, you know, once that stops, um, you know, they're suddenly like, okay, well, what am I now? Um, you know, when I'm in the streets, you know, nobody's people aren't no longer identify me as just a basketball player. 
Um, so they kind of struggle, you know, with regular life, you know, whether or not it's like states of depression or isolation and different things like that. So I want, I want to ask you, um, you know, knowing, you know, knowing this and knowing that many athletes go through this, you know, what are some of the things that the PA does, um, you know, to help players with the whole mental aspect, um, you know, of, you know, uh, coming out of retirement? I think I was reading one article and they were saying like, it's almost like a, Almost like PD, uh, postpartum uh, PTSD, where it's like you know where uh, athletes are coming or people are coming back from you know soldiers coming back from the states or something like that. Um, so, what programs do you guys um, have available for uh, for athletes? And I think one of, one of the most important things that you just touched, there is so many people that we went through going through stuff that we don't think is a mental health problem. Yeah. I think we we feel is oh it is pressure or Oh, I'm just not playing good, but I don't feel right with myself. Or and you go home and, and you have a rough week for whatever reason. And and now that people open up and now that it's more it's easier to to talk about it. Now you going back and say, man, I think I have time during my career that I maybe wasn't right. I, I, my mind wasn't in the right space. But but I, but you you maybe didn't know. Um, we are human beings and we 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 had all the pressure in the world and we we had to be 100 percent every day and uh, perform in front of a lot of people so so i think that's really important and and um, we have a program like uh, with, with the pa and and every team now is mandatory to have a mental health um, and um, a psychologist in, in the team as a staff member just because of that i think we gotta help guys just mm-hmm. to talk about just to to kind of like an open up and and sometimes, like I say, just the pressure of being in the NBA or being in the in, in a in a Euroleague in in whatever team, we don't realize there is a problem there. And, uh, and sometimes we need to talk to to somebody to help us and to train our mind too. So so we have a problem a program to, for that. Uh, we have a, a a doctor. We have a, a former player. Kenyon Dooling was was doing it. Mm-hmm. He just went to Utah. So there is another player coming in, a former player, but this was the contact to for mental health, for help, or whatever. And after we can put you in contact with somebody in your town, or these guys just will travel, and they will totally confidential, just to help guys. It's kind of like a, a line for them to, to just reach out and, and try to see what's, what's next. That's very important. Now, um, I, I ask a lot of guys too about retirement. And sometimes they say that the, the hardest thing about retirement for them is filling that void, that competitive fire that you have, you know, you can no longer go to practice, you can no longer, you know, you know, fill that competitive. So, you know, what ways have you kind of filled that void? I know some guys say they do golf or they, you know, they find some other type of competitive sport or something like that. But, you know, what ways have you filled it and have you find it difficult to kind of fulfill, you know, that that void that's missing from, you know, competitive athletics? For me it was, it is crazy, but uh, it was trying to stay in shape. So, yeah. so I'm like, okay, I gotta figure out what is the way of, because my body was asking me for, yeah, it was asking me for, you kind of just sit after mm-hmm. all this year. It's asking like, for me, like every day I got to do something. It's almost like I just need a little sweat to, to feel good, whatever. So I'm like, okay. So I start going to the gym and I'm starting to, to work out. I'm like, I'm missing something. So, so I started, this is so crazy. I start with a, a classes of like a biking, kind of mm-hmm. like, a, you know, cycling yeah. and, uh, and just going with the music and stuff like that. And I realized, okay, you know, after a while, I'm like, eh, I'm just getting bored. Yeah. So I'm, I'm checking and there is a class who was, it was called Pursuit. Pursuit. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, pers- okay. I'm like, let me check. So now I'm seeing there is a huge screen. We are 40 in the class and you compete and you see your number going up and down against other guys. I'm like, okay, I got it. <laughs> so it. now I'm getting into that. I'm getting into that the first day and I'm going like crazy. And I'm, I see, I finish myself like eight. I'm like, uh-huh. no way. I'm <laughs> looking around. I'm like, no way I can finish eight. So then I start realize this was more about resistance than the speed. So I'm figuring out now I'm, I'm winning. I'm top one, top, you know, first mm-hmm. of second every day. So now I know the guys. Now we're looking at each other. I'm like, this is my best <laughs> hour of the, of the day. So I was going three, four times a week to that class just to compete. I needed that. And I was getting home. I'm like, you know the best part? My wife was like, what are you doing? I'm like, look, this is perfect. I go there and I know if I don't give my 100%, I'm not winning. Mm-hmm. Because there's other guys who are in the same shape as me. They've been biking for longer and they beat me. So I need to give 100%. So it was a perfect workout for me. So that's how I got into, uh, 
it's to shape and I take that competitiveness uh, uh, way out of my day. It was with the biking. That's perfect. Uh, so that's the story. The story. And that's perfect. I love it. That's perfect. It. So, so people can find you in, you know, in a studio in New York City, you know, yes, yes. <laughs> cycling. I was not going to uh, Equinox there, and I love it. It was great. Um, like I said, after you start getting relationship with guys because they know you and, uh, and they compete against you too, um, it is fun. It was, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. That's cool. That's cool. Now, like one of the one of the other reasons why I had, wanted to have you on here is because you have experience as a as a European player. Um, you know, going through retirement and going through this transition. Um, and a lot of European players, especially the players I talked to, you know, um, you started your professional career, I think at 16, you said, or you left, you left home around at 16. Um, and for those that don't know, the European system is different than the American system. You know, we still have to go to high school. A lot of guys still go to college. So, you know, you still get your degree. But then the problem is for a lot of European players is that, you know, you become professional at 16 and you're playing your career and then all of a sudden you're 34 35 and you don't have your degree because you've been playing basketball literally all your life so can you speak about that and how can you know european players especially european players playing in the euro league or playing in leagues you know help to transition you know into retirement um you know when when they don't have the degree or there's programs they can you know there's a program that you know about where they can go back to get the degree because I feel a lot of times it's, you know, when these guys retire, it's only they can do one or two things. It's like coaching, being involved in some type of, you know, basketball director, um, being a part of the federation, and that's it. So, you know, I want you to speak on that a little bit. And that's, that's a big difference. Um, I think there is, you can like, there is good things about the U.S. way of, of kind of like a growing up in basketball, and there is good things about the European one. But one is that, and one of the things that happens, like you say, like, I leave my home, I left my home when I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so from 13 to 17, it was my parents, and they like look. Okay, the, the kid can go. I, I went to Victoria, and I went to. It was like 700 kilometers from my house, and my parents were like, "Yeah, he can go, but study first. Yeah. Like he's 13 years old. That's all he can do. Like after you can practice him as many times as you want, but he gotta go to school. So, but when you get to 17, 18, you gotta make a decision, and that's what happened. I started college. I say, okay, I want to do both. I can do maybe uh, part in person, part online, but it was impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot start saying, look, I got to miss a practice because I got an exam or, 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 or a game. So I'm like, okay, uh, let me be a bit professional. So I make that decision, like you say, and just at 18, I'm professional, but I got no college degree. I got nothing. Yeah. So, but I always talk about it. Okay, it's an opportunity. It's an experience. Uh, even if you're older, I was on my mind, I always look, I always can go back and, and get study, or like you say, let's find which programs I could do. Like, even if there is no, like maybe a college degree, I can start educating myself, how yeah. I can be growing growing up because, you know, I don't know for how long I'm gonna be able to play. And like you say, like you're 34, you have no, no college degree, you maybe don't make it an amazing amount of money, then you need to figure something out. Yeah. So so I think that's, that's why it's important to, to think about what programs I can do. Uh, there is so much time we are spending on hotels and planes that you can use to, to just read, to just start figuring things out. And, and, and those are the time we got to, you know, at the beginning you can play a PlayStation for a while, but there's so many hours. So I think that's a good mix. And that will be my advice to, to really think about what I like. Even like I said before, maybe it's just because you invest in your money in opening a restaurant or mm -hmm. opening a, a club some back home or opening whatever you want to do, just to, to know more about that business, maybe that's the way your way out. Maybe that's your way you're educating yourself to be better at that and just be good at that. But but you shouldn't just, like I said before, you shouldn't just wait until the 33, 34. So there is so many places now where you can do everything online, mm -hmm. so many programs that they get college degrees. So like I say, it could be about uh, sport managing. It could be about... Uh, Accountants, uh, accounts. It could be about whatever you really want to to be. Uh, uh, you're able to do it and to 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 look for it. So there is so many in every country now that it's easy. That's good. That's good. That's that's a, that's a lot of good advice. Now, um, I, like I said, I know you're you're a busy guy, and I got two more questions um, before before we get, let you get out of here. Um, so first would be, and you get already given, you know, so much great advice. But specifically, you know, what advice would you give, you know, to players? Um, athletes, basketball, whatever, um, 
when it comes to retirement, when it comes to transitioning, um, you know, guys that are, are about to be retired and then also guys that are already retired, you know, what advice would you, would you give um, throughout your experience, you know, your own personal experience and also experiences that you know from, from different players? I think it will be, first, you got to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Just to know you get in there. So be, be honest with yourself. Be prepared. Uh, really ask tough questions, but to yourself on the sense of like what I want to do, what was next, what I like, what is my, I want to be like we, like we touch. Like we're going to be a coach or front office or a businessman, whatever. So I think you got to be a step by step to have that clear. So, so, you know, so you're ready for whatever is next. And if you already retire, it's, you know, never, it's never, never too late to, yeah. to, to see, okay, this is what I like. This is what I want to do. And what I, you know, what, what contacts I still have, who can help me to, to really, uh, you know, kind of like get this, this, whatever it is I want to do. So I think that will be the, the advice, like, Hey, don't wait until last minute, be prepared, be honest with yourself um, and just start thinking about putting that in your mind of like, hey, it's gonna, the time is going to arrive. What's next and why and, and, and how to do it. So I think that will be the best uh, advice. Now, um, you're, can you explain your role with the MVPA and then also explain, um, as you know, we know we're the EuroLeague Players Association and we know we're trying to, you know, getting our, our association on the ground. Can you explain, you know, the importance, you know, of a Players Association and, you know, how it has benefited you, you know, throughout your whole entire career? Yeah, well, like right now, was it was more about they, we never have like a player in the office in a yeah. daily basis, okay? So my, my first, the first approach to, to Michelle and, and, and Mateo and, and the guys and the PA was about, we need somebody, we do a lot of stuff, we got all the departments, but we don't have actually a voice there to say, look, what you guys doing, maybe the guys don't like it. And, yeah. you know, the PA work for players, but sometimes yeah. we spend money or we do the stuff that guys don't really care about. And mm -hmm. we, we should like maybe, but we don't have that. We expect them to like it. Yeah, but we don't have the. We are not players, yeah. you know. Don't so have that, that was perspective. The, exactly. So that was the beginning. At the beginning was more about this is what we're doing. So I was meeting with every department of different projects, and it was maybe it was just little things of like guys, guys don't gonna do that at, at all. Why you guys don't switch to that? And maybe we were spending too much time or too much money on something that, yeah, it looked good. Yes, it was with the best intention, but guys don't use it. So mm -hmm. why we gonna do it? So, so I started like that. I started like Michelle needed to, to, to have a voice of a player in all the departments and see what the departments were doing and how they were doing it. And after, you know, uh, just when you start working and I was part of the task force to, to like we talked before about the bubble and the mm -hmm. NBA and, but, and my own projects or what I thought it was something that was good. So I was just putting kind of like a little groups together and Michelle uh, put me in charge of some department of some projects or so it was kind of like getting into, you know, a, a, a bigger role. But at the beginning was, was just that. It was just like, hey, we need a player. We need to know what you think on the stuff that we're doing. Is this right? Are we doing it the right way? Mm -hmm. So that was the, my first few months. It was kind of like getting into that, into knowing everybody, knowing how the PA really worked, what uh, project we have, and how I could help from a player's perspective to mm -hmm. do those projects better. That's good. That's good. Now, the, and, uh, go ahead, yeah, the second part. Yeah, no, no, it, it helped us a lot. I think mm -hmm. we, we don't realize how important it is here in the, you know, the, the PA is, is for us and they have all kinds of problems from transitioning to uh, whatever you need, they're there for you and they have the answers. They're not your agent. They're not the NBA. They're just for the players. We mm -hmm. hire those guys. And I think people sometimes don't realize that. I think uh, you see us at another company but it's actually your company. Yeah. Like, you know, from you. Michelle to the last person, they work for you. Yeah. So, so when you call, they're going to answer mm -hmm. and they're going to give you the best answer possible to help you, you know, do whatever you need from whatever kind of advice. So I'm looking for a financial advisor. They will give you one or, or a few names. They will give you a, a you want to do an, a foundation. They will help you to open a foundation. You need to do a camp with kids. They will help you to do that. So there is so many little things, even or legal, or uh, you got a problem with your agent. Whatever you can think about it, are the, 
they're there for you. So during my whole career, it was in a lot of situations. You just need a call to, to ask a question. There is something mm-hmm. coming from the NBA or from your team that you're not sure is right. So you always ask and say, hey, can they do this? Is this the right way? Are we okay with this? So just a little question, uh, they're there for you. And, and that, that's the best part. And, and it's, been, it's been a great relationship. And like I said, I never thought I was going to be working for them. Yeah. But uh, it just came. And it was an amazing opportunity for for a player association in the US to reach out to an international player to do this. Um, so that's why I thought it was, a, you know, I had to say yes and, and to accept this role. And I thought it was really important. And now one of my things is like, I got to look for who is going to be next. So you got to find your role, replacement, exactly. <laughs> yes, because because actually, like you can imagine, Kyle, like after a couple of years out of the locker room, you don't know exactly what's going on in the locker room. Very there true. new yeah, guys. Very true. There is new, they use different things. They talk about different things. So I think it should be another guy doing the same of, okay, I just retired. I know what's going on. But for me, maybe after the next season, okay, I don't know what's really going on in the locker room. I I still have my contacts, my friends, but the daily, I think you lost that. So in this role, you need somebody to just retire to actually have a more closer, uh, you know, re you know, yeah, reality of what's going on and, mm-hmm. and if that's good or bad. So so that's one of my my job too, to say, okay, from this guy who are about to retire, who could be Hopefully able next. to or wanted to live in New York and do this? So that will be another, yes, another it's stuff a, to do. It's not a bad responsibility at all. <laughs> it is nice. I mean, yeah. like I say, it's exciting. It's something new. You learn a lot. I ask a lot of questions and I'm willing to, you know, to have a different role in this. And uh, my role now is, is what it is and uh, it will be changing but uh, but i love it it's a, still a team sport if we could say that <laughs> yeah yeah team sport off the court now yes. last last two questions um you like i said before we mentioned in a bunch you played 20 years um you know between europe and and in the nba advice to younger players who you know who want to have your type of success who want to have you know longevity and want to have you know a great professional career what would your advice be well, you got to take care of yourself. Uh-huh. I know. I think that's the more important. Uh, if you are uh, you able to to be professional, that's number two. And sometimes it's not it's not all about talent. Um, you know, like I wasn't the True. best ever on my position, but I was able to adjust. I was able yeah. to put my teammates first. I was able to put my team first. So I think it's just finding the role. Uh, why that team wants you? Why you in that team? What is the role you want? And I think that was important. I was on all kinds of teams, good teams, and not so good teams. And I was trying to be important in all of them. Um, sometimes with more time with a ball in my hands, sometimes more of a shooter, sometimes mm-hmm. more of a, a mentor, whatever. But I think it's about that. It's about being willing to, to sacrifice sometimes uh, stuff just because of the good of a team to, to, be, to be successful. And I always put this as sample. In the national team, and we come in before, we all get to the national team being the best, maybe the best player in our teams or, or one of the best roles. Mm-hmm. And we got to Spain and we say, okay, this is not about us anymore. It's about Spain. It's about our country. It's about our team. Mm-hmm. So it's not me wanting to play 40 or Sergio now. or mm-hmm. It's about, okay, this pressure is on the coach. We know what we got to do. I don't know who is going to play more. We'll do our best, but we're going to put our egos aside just because we want to sacrifice to be for, for the, you know, for the team and we want to win. And like you say, we were a world champion. Who was the world champion? All of us. Yeah. We don't know how many, I don't even know how many minutes I played that game or if <laughs> doesn't matter. more or less. Than yeah. that. You know what I mean? And that, yeah. that's the point. And, and I think that's why I was in the league for so long. Maybe it wasn't because, you know, the numbers I was putting at the end, but it was more about, I was giving something to the team that they needed me to be there, to be part of. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's adjusting, it's sacrificing stuff, it's being professional, it's, it's work hard every day, it's trying to get better. And, um, you know, so that that will be the, the advice. Like, you don't have to be the 30 point guy every day. There is all the guys who maybe are the ones you're doing that on that team. Doesn't mean you don't want to keep working to be that guy. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you got to realize when is that time. I mean, that's that's great advice, and I, I appreciate you for that. Um, and the, the last question, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, who is your favorite 
current EuroLeague player and who is your favorite, all-time favorite EuroLeague player? Oh, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. I always <laughs> like it's tough, man. I always with so many good players. I always like Navarro. Uh, yeah. You know, Juan Carlos in what he did in EuroLeague, and yeah. and, and it was always always amazing. But I mean, if, oh, in the history of the EuroLeague, so many amazing. I love Spanulis too. Yeah. Spanulis was yeah. always a guy. Even if like we were kind of like close into yeah. the same generation, but yeah. because I left rivals earlier, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but in a good way. But I always yeah. was somebody who like man, the way he was playing, and um, so I always like him too a lot. So yeah, I could say those two. Those are amazing. And right now, who right now? I like you know it's my guy, but I like to to see Sergio playing. Yeah. You know, the last Chacho. week was amazing. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. he's still getting this pass behind the back and stuff like that. So I always enjoy him a lot, you know. But uh, so many good players, man. Uh, Mike James in, in, mm -hmm. in Moscow, you know, when he got hard, this is amazing. But uh, uh, Shane Larkin, I mm -hmm. was uh, he was a rookie with me in Dallas Mavericks. Oh, wow. So I love, yeah, he was, uh, he was a rookie. Um, and uh, after we went to New York together. Um, so it was, it is nice to see what, what he was able to adjust, even mm -hmm. he had a good season in Boston, but after he got back there, he got to FS, one of the best players, he adjusts his game to the EuroLeague, and you know, so those are guys that I always like to, to see, because you know, like I say, you know how to be good in, in whatever yeah. situation, and you adjust, and you say, okay, this is me, I'm going to be the best one here, and I can do it, because I'm good enough. Sometimes it's not about talent. You know, there is guys in, in the Euroleague that have more talent than guys here in the in the league. So there is other things that are, are involved with being in the right situation or the right coach or whatever it is. So so I think it's good to have those guys being successful there, there, there too. And and they're 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 nice to watch. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time um and, and giving us so much knowledge and you know, giving us so much today. Um and I wish you all the best. Um, I'm sure that, you know, we'll be bumping into each other and running into each other very soon. Um, so take care. All my best to your family. Please tell Mateo and Michelle that I, I said hello. Um, and we'll, we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Actually, Arti, Arti sent uh, send me a oh, say hello yeah. to, to Cal because I have yeah. a, he's working with us now. So okay. he's like, yeah, let, him, let Cal know too because, you know, and I was there with the Knicks that year. Yeah. And that's why I knew IRT and I knew, you know, your wife and stuff like that. So yeah, that's yeah. how... Uh, the connection uh, started but uh, but I mean you know I will uh, good luck to the rest of the thank season thank you thank you, know, you. And, uh, I think I got to say my, my wife says um, my wife says that you were definitely one of her favorite players to work with she says that all the time every time I, I told her I was uh, talking to you today and she told me to tell you hello but she says that you definitely were one of the, her most <laughs> favorite players that, that she ever worked with uh, at her time with the Knicks and that's, that's the more valuable stuff for me. Like yeah. I always say, basketball, you always can, you know, there's people who are going to love you and hate you, but I think what you leave behind, the people who you work with, your teammate, I think that's, that's what I take with from my 20 years career. Mm -hmm. It's about that love, um, being able to call somebody and, and be friend and don't have bad relationships. I think that that was the best part. And so thank you. I, I love that. That, that's, that make my, uh, my day. Oh. So that, that's all I'm looking for. So thank all you. right. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. We'll talk again soon. Take care. Thank you.